Hello gang, welcome to lesson three on probability for S1. Uh, there's just one handout to this and uh, well let's get into it, it's on tree diagrams. Um, so we start off with this example, straight into it. Um, so we've got some event, a motor rally and uh, the number of people that come will depend on the weather. So if it's a rainy day, there's a low probability of a big turnout, only 0.4. But if it doesn't rain, the probability of a big turnout is much greater, 0.9. And the likelihood of rain on the day of the race is 0.75. Okay, that's all the information we have. And the first thing we want to know is the probability that there is a big turnout and it rains. So we'll get straight in with a tree diagram. So we'll just use some notation to represent the events. So R is the event, it rains. And we'll use B for the event, there is a big turnout. And whether or not there's a big turnout depends upon whether it rains. So raining or not raining is the first split in our tree diagram. And we know that on this occasion is 0.75 probability of it raining. Therefore 0.25 is the probability that it doesn't rain. Okay, in either case, the next split is between either a big turnout or not a big turnout. And we're given the probabilities we need here as conditional probabilities. So if it rains, we're told that the probability of a big turnout is only 0.4, and therefore not a big turnout has a probability of 0.6. Whereas if it doesn't rain, the probability of a big turnout increases to 0.9, and the probability that there isn't a big turnout obviously decreases to 0.1. So let's use this tree diagram. The probability that there is a big turnout and it rains, the notation for that is the intersection, and we just look at the branches that correspond to this. And we have to go along the first branch for it raining, and then along the branch for it having a big turnout, and you always multiply along the branches. So simply multiply 0 0.75 and 0 0.4. The second one, the probability that there's a big turnout, well there's two ways to get that. Either there's a big turnout and it rains, or there's a big turnout and it doesn't rain. And that means two routes along my tree diagram. The first one we worked out in part A. The second one, multiply along the two corresponding branches. Okay, so 0.25 is the probability that it doesn't rain. Multiply that by 0.9, the probability that there is then a big turnout. And add those all up together, that gives us our answer. Okay, next example. This is a type that should be quite familiar to you from GCSE. Um, it is known as sampling without replacement. We've got a bunch of uh, beads in a bag. We take one out, record it, and then without putting that one back, we take another one. Because we haven't replaced it, the probabilities that apply to the second bead are different from those that apply to the first. So we look at each split of the tree diagram being the choice of a bead. The first one can be green, a probability of 7 twelfths, or blue, 5 twelfths, and that should be fairly straightforward. Whereas for bead 2, we have to be more careful. It can again only be green or blue in each case, but now, depending on which branch you've gone down for the first bead, the probabilities are different because there are different numbers of beads. For example, looking at the top half, if you've taken a green one first, which puts you in the top half, then there are now only 6 greens left. So it's 6 out of 11, and correspondingly 5 out of 11 for blue. Whereas in the bottom half, you've taken a blue, so there are still 7 green, so it's 7 out of 11, but only 4 blues. So 4 out of 11 is the probability that you get a blue the second time. So we want the probability that one is green and the other is blue. <clears throat> doesn't matter which order they come in, so we need to add the probability that we get a green first and a blue second, and the probability that we get a blue first and a green second. Okay, so looking along the tree diagram, getting a green first and then a blue, is going along the first branch, which is 7 twelfths, and that branch there, which is 5 elevenths, so we multiply those uh, values together. Uh, fairly straightforward. And similarly, for getting a blue first and then a green, we go down this branch here, and that gives us a blue, and then we have to go up that branch there. So again, there's two probabilities which we have to multiply. You multiply along the branches, and you can see that these two probabilities are equal. Okay, they correspond to the same thing happening but in different orders. And that's a general feature of these sorts of questions. So we've just got the same probability occurring twice. It's two lots of that, which simplifies down to 35 66. And that's it. 
Right, this one we're going to do two different ways. Um, we start out by considering the intersection of A and B, and this just uses the formula, the multiplication rule, okay, because we know the probability of A given B, and we know the probability of B. If you're familiar with this formula, then you'll be able to spot straight away that that's what you need to do. Put the numbers in, we get 0.03, the probability of the intersection of A and B. The next bit is slightly different, but we're going to do it in the same way. We want the probability of the intersection of A with not B. Okay, so it's the same formula, but with B replaced by not B. Um, oh, that dash is supposed to be inside the bracket there, never mind. Um, in any case, we know those probabilities as well, so that's still really straightforward to do using the multiplication rule. Now part C, um, after a while you'll just be able to see what to do here. But I'm going to draw a Venn diagram to enable us to spot it. Okay, so I've got my two events. From part A, I know that the intersection of A and B is 0.03, so I can add that on my diagram. And from part B, check that you understand that the answer to part B is this region here, the probability of the intersection of A with not B. So if I want the probability of A, the whole of that circle for A, I simply have to add these two regions together. So 0.03 plus 0 .0, uh, 0.42 is 0.45. Parts D and E will come back to in a minute, but we asked to do this two ways. So we're going to look at the second way of doing it now, which is going to be using a tree diagram. Okay, now we've got conditional probability here. We've got A dependent on B or not B. So B is the one that's going to split first. So let's draw this out. Uh, the first split is whether B occurs or doesn't occur. We know the probability of B is 0.3 and therefore it's trivial to work out that the probability of not B is 0.7. The next split is whether A occurs or not, and it depends on whether B has occurred. Okay, this one here is the probability of A given B, because we know that we've gone along the branch for B, so that's the probability that we need. And we know that one, and the 0 0.9 we can just work out by subtraction. In a similar way, for the split uh, here between A occurring and not occurring, the probability that we want is the probability of A given not B because in this case we've gone down the branch for not B first. And we're also given that, 0 0.6. And of course that means that the other one is 0 0.4. So fairly easily I can build up a tree diagram here. Now for part A I want to know the probability of the intersection of A and B. So multiply along the branches. The probability of B multiplied by the probability of A. And like we got when we did it the other way around, we get an answer of 0.03. Part B is going to work in a very similar way. The probability of the intersection of A and not B, i.e. the probability that A happens but B doesn't, multiply on the branches. So first of all, the bottom branch for B not happening, 0.7, and then fork up for A happening, so 0.6. Multiply those together, we get the answer that's familiar from the previous method. Now for part C, we need to consider all the branches which end in A. So that one there is going along multiplying 0.3 by 0.1 and the alternative is going down and then up and we multiply along those branches and just add it all up. Although if you're smart you can spot that the probability of A is going to be the sum of the two answers from part A and B because if A happens then it's got to be either A and B or A and not B. Right, parts D and E now. To do these, it doesn't matter which method you've used for the first part. It's a fairly straightforward application of the multiplication rule for conditional probability. Okay, and it's using it in its fraction form. Okay, so straightforward. Probability of B given A is the probability of B intersection A divided by the probability of A. And we know both of those. Okay, work them out already, so that's fairly straightforward to calculate. And part E works in a very similar way. Um, same formula, just with A replaced by not A. And we have to get the bits and pieces from the diagram, so either from the diagram or from the, the Venn diagram or the tree diagram. Um, I'll let you check that those are the two things to multiply for the intersection of B with not A. That's the probability 
of not a, which is 1 minus 0 0.45, and just stick it in the calculator. This is what you get. And there we are. Okay, I hope that you've enjoyed that lesson. I hope it made sense for you. Any questions, just come and find me in school, and I will see you next time.